a vision plane is aligning that vision to the context of the will of God. Aligning that that's what vision to the context of the word of God. Making it plain. That means, listen, everybody begins the year with some set of visions, some set of goals. What are visions? Visions are goals. Um, 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 proposed um, um, things you have written down that you propose to do. Proposed visions, proposals for the year and all of that. So visions are goals. Things that you are set to do for the next year. Like for some of us now, we are already saying that next year is going to be like this. Next year I will do this. Next year I will do that. Next year I will do this other one. Do you understand? So that's a vision. That's a vision. But you have to understand that vision is higher than a goal. I will explain. Vision is like a goal, but higher than a goal. Because in your set of goals, you are just setting out a set of things that you want to do. But vision is not something you are setting out to do. Vision is something God has given to you. Vision is divinely orchestrated. Vision is something that you, you know that this is what God wants me to do. So now, how do we align our goals to the visions of God? or to the divine visions that the Lord gives to us. Now you have to understand that when you are making your goal, it has to be, when you are writing down your goal, it has to be in alignment with the vision that the Lord has given to you. So if you are seated here and by now you don't even have a vision as regards 2020, there is a problem. By now you should have gone to the Lord in prayers and you should have told the Lord, you should have gone to the Lord in prayers and you should have asked the Lord what next year is holding for you. Because if you read verse 1, I don't want to talk about verse 1, I want to concentrate on verse 2. He said that I what? Behold, I stand upon the watch, the tower, rather, to watch what the Lord will say unto me. So that means you are ready, you are set for the new year, for the next year. Now I want us to believe that I was teaching yesterday on the platform and I told them that um, that uh, the problem we don't, we've always had is we used to have this understanding that every year is carrying a blessing. Am I correct? Yeah? That every year is carrying a blessing. Abby? That's the understanding. But that is wrong. Scripturally, it's wrong. Listen to me. No year is carrying anything. Every year is empty. Yes. If, if it is the strength of the year that blesses a man, that means that means everybody that gets into the new year should be blessed. But we have a lot of people who got into the new year but are still far from the blessing. So, even if pastor comes and says 2020 is our year of dominion, listen to me, that prophetic statement is a statement. It has nothing to do with the year. So the problem now, or the question now is, how do I align that prophetic statement to my life? Because every year is empty. Nothing is loaded. So what do we do? Number one. You need to understand the vision of God for your life. It is in the understanding of the vision of God that you can now know what you need to do to make your year the way it should be. Our understanding has always been that it is the year that will make us. But no, it is you that will make your year. Did you get what I said now? So imagine somebody say, ah, and somebody just say, hey, happy new year, oh, ah, this year, all the good things where this year carry come. Do you understand? All the good things that this year came with, we receive our own in the name of Jesus. And everybody says, Amen. I pray such prayers too, but I have an understanding now. So my understanding, I know that, listen, the year is good because I have the understanding. Did you get that now? So even if a lot of prophecies are released on me, if I don't have the understanding to dominate the year, the year is still empty. That's 
why most times we, we write down goals. Some of us have carryovers now. What I mean by carryovers, you have carried over one goal for five years. It's okay, I didn't do it this year, I'll do it next year. It has like that, like that. For five years, you are still trying to achieve one thing and it's still difficult. Why? Because you think it is the year that is going to be productive. No, it is your productivity that affects the year, not the year's productivity affecting you. Is that a new understanding now? So every year is empty. It is what you go into the year with that determines the return the year gives to you. So in understanding our matter tonight now, the Lord said, and he's saying to us this evening, write division. Make it plain. I will explain that. Now listen, the Bible did not say write your goals. It said write division. It did not say write what you want to become. It said write division. It did not say write what you want to do. It said write division. And I've told you that the vision is like a goal, but it's not your goal. The vision is God's goals. So it is wrong to write down your goals before writing down the goals of God. In writing your goals, you must at first consider the goals of God before your own goals can be met. The reason why most times we write down goals and we, we find it difficult to achieve them is because our goals are, are so full of, of ego, pride, self-centeredness, selfishness. There is no kingdom responsibility. There's no kingdom, there's no kingdom price or sacrifice. There's no kingdom anything. So the instruction we receive is to write down vision and not your goals. So imagine that when you are writing down for the new year, you are writing down based on the instructions of God, based on the revelations of God, based on what God says. And God says to you, my daughter, this year, I want to review myself. So you are writing your goals based on what God said. That is a vision. And that is the only thing that can be made plain. Your goals cannot be made plain. It is only visions that can be made plain. Now, when the vision becomes your mission, then your goals also will be met. It's as simple as this. Very simple. So now, if I want to ask every one of us, for the past years, can you remember when you actually wrote down the vision? A vision. You wrote down a vision for the past years. Can you remember? Say, okay, I wrote the vision. Every time, we have always used the scripture to explain goals. But I'm telling you now that this thing has nothing to do with your goals. It has nothing to do with what you want to become in life. It has nothing to do with what you want to achieve in life. No. This place, what you see is thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So what this place means is that you consider the will of God first before you start thinking about your own will. You consider your own at, uh, God's achievements first before you think about your own achievements. Let's assume that the next year you want to get into school. One of the things you need to understand is God's vision for you. God's vision for you as regards that school. You need to understand it. Is God sending you there to win 100 souls? That's a vision. It's God sending you there to, to, to deliver the oppressed. That's a vision. Your goal is useless until there is a vision back in it. The vision is the foundation of your goal. I said before, and I'm repeating again, that your goals must be established on the foundation of a vision. Like, for example, when I'm writing down my goals for the year, you can never see anything personal. I'm writing down goals. God said, okay, in January you are going to do this program. Okay, sir. In February you are going to do... And not, there's no personal gain. There's no benefit for myself. There can be spiritual benefits, yes. But in fulfilling the vision, my goals are also met. Because God is not a God that betrays a man. God cannot call you to cheat on you. You cannot fulfill God's own and God abandons your own. He does not work. 
but our mindset now is that we think that the vision is is what we should write. You know, motivational speakers we always tell you, ah, uh, you must, you must. Anybody that does not have a goal, we roll around, we uh, go around life like a goat. We roam li- around life like a goat. So you must have a goal in life. You must have a goal. So when they, most times they bring this scripture for us, and the only thing we see is how to write next year, I want to be in school. Next year, I want to get married. Next year, I want to do this. Next year, I want to do that. Well, there was never any time in my life that when I began to come to the level of understanding, I don't think I, I got to that point where I was saying, next year, I want to have abs. Next year, I want to do this. Everything that was happening in my life were happening based on the revelation of my submission to the vision of God. So at, at, at a point in my life, when God saw that the vision has got into a position where I need to have a house, he gave me my own apartment. Do you understand? When the vision got to a point where I need to be married, he gave me my wife. Now the vision is getting to a point where I need to have my kids. He's giving my child. That's the way it's working. The vision will get to a point. It's going to give us land. The vision and the goals work hand in hand. So in fulfilling the vision, my goals are also met. Is that a new understanding this night? So you see that, that the reason why for the past five years you have been saying I will do this next year and you did not do it. You never met. You never achieved it. was because you were being self-centered. You were doing your will and not the will of the Lord. You know most times we think we really engage God but truly we are not engaging God. We think engaging God is just saying Father this year is me and you. This year I'm going to be faithful. So but when you are I was saying something yesterday while I was teaching on, online. I said, many of us think we begin with God at the new year. Listen, many of us will be talking to God and say, God, this year I'm going to be faithful. But when you are writing in your diary, your number one self has nothing to do with God. Many of us trust the year than God. We trust the year. And that's how most people, what, most times, January 1st. People are already prophesying. You know what? This year, this year we give us good job. We say amen. This year we give you this one. Amen. This year we give you that one. Amen. But I tell you that even the year is surprised. Because the year itself knows that it is empty. The, the year is just a calculation of days, seasons, and times. Now listen, every date, season, and time has nothing to offer. It is your understanding that controls what happens. When you have the understanding, you can call things to be as though they were, irrespective of what season or what time. Check your Bible. There were times where the Bible says, and they told Jesus, this is the, the Sabbath. And because it is the Sabbath, you are not allowed to do any activity. But on the Sabbath, Jesus will heal the sick. So you see now that it was not really about the season, but it was about the person and the understanding. All of us can get into 2020. Definitely nobody will die young. I know that one. All of us get into 2020 and you don't see that at the end of the year maybe 20 people got into 2020 together the same, on that same atmosphere. Then we can not see maybe two or three that are really having something tangible to, to count for for the year. I'm telling you check when. It will be only those that um, wrote down the vision and made it plain. Those that wrote down goals alone will not achieve anything. By itself, you know, there's some, the Lord has been doing something recently and I'm really grateful. He's gracious actually. God is really gracious. He's taking me back to scriptures that are very simple. I have preached with that scriptures many times. But it's giving me a better understanding. See, uh, you see this word of God is bigger than everybody. Is bigger than everybody. And until you have the right understanding of this word, you cannot have the right application. In as much as you have a wrong understanding, your application is also wrong. It is what you know that you do. So many of us usually think that when writing the vision is when we say. Listen to me. Writing division is beyond New Year resolution. New Year resolution, I will say, ah, this year, I will no longer do this. Some people will say it's 31st night. 
and we no longer do it, then we do it before first we finish. Do you understand? So it's nothing about the new year resolution. You will not write no more stealing, no more this, no more that. Before one week, that no more, no more, no more, you already broke no more, almost everything. Why? Because you wrote down resolution. You did not write vision. Next year, I'm going to have at least I'll have a business. Next year, at least I would have done this. Next year, then at the end of the year, out of 15 things that you wrote down, maybe only one. Why? Because you wrote down goal. You did not write down vision. So you write vision. Now, after writing the vision, that means you, you, are, you are aligning yourself to the will of God. Number two, it says make it plain. Now, what is the meaning of the word make it plain? It means that your vision must become your mission. Until your vision becomes a mission, there is no provision. I repeat, until your, well, the word, your vision becomes a mission, there is no provision. So most times, some of the prayers we are praying for, God is intentionally not answering them. Why? Because God has seen that about, it's either that you don't know the vision or you have not written the vision or you know the vision but the vision is not yet a mission so there cannot be provision. It is when God sees that you have begun the work. I give you this example. I remember years ago when the Lord said, son, it is time now to concentrate on full ministry. That's when we began uh, Madu officially. The Lord said to me, I want to stop, I want you to stop traveling up and down, sit down and face the church. I said, okay. I said, so Lord, if you want me to sit down, I understand the vision, but I want to make it a mission, but I need provision. That's why I told him. And he said to me, start. When you start, provision will come. And I started. And before, the, before you know, in about a month or so, we had an altar, we had a drum set, we had a keyboard, we had uh, one amplifier then that we were using, and two small speakers. Then before you know it, in about three, four months, we changed from bench to chairs. Why? Because I accepted the vision of our one, that's by writing it down, I made it plain by making the vision a mission that God brought the provision. So sometimes, some of the things you are praying for are not really wrong, but God cannot give it to you because if he gives it to you, you are going to misuse the resource. Every God's resource is for the fulfilling of a vision. God does not release resources anyhow. You are asking God for money. You may be asking God for apartments. You may be asking God for admission. But if God sees that you don't understand the vision, you cannot get it. Because if God gives it to you, he knows you are just to waste. You are going to waste it. Not understanding the vision, if God gives you the provision, I tell you, you are just going to do something else. So some of the things we are praying for are things that God already has in his agenda to give to us. But because we don't have the understanding of making plain the vision, he's not giving it to us. Do you understand? You bought a tablet for your child. Your child is two years. Your child does not understand yet. Do you understand? How to use a tab. If that's for you bought it for your child, it's your child too. But would you guide that uh, tablet and give the child? Why? Because at two years, the child can think the tablet is sponge and use it to be sponging itself with water. That is the same thing that is applicable in this. So you are saying, Lord, as I'm here now, if you give me just 200,000, I am fine with it. And the Lord said, I want to give you 200. In fact, I want to give you 20 million from what I, I have now. According to my plan, according to the vision I'm giving to you, the vision I'm giving to you is, you know, the, every vision God gives to you is like a contract. God is giving to you is like a project. Now, for every divine project, there's a divine budget. God has a budget for his project. But you see, when you have not aligned, you cannot get the budget. So God is saying, I, I want, I have to give you from what I have now. I'm supposed to give you about 50 million for this project. But because you don't have an understanding of the vision, the only, the only understanding you have is New Year resolution. The only understanding you have is goals. The only understanding you have is what you want to achieve. 
And most times we get carried away because maybe our friends seem ahead of, ahead of us. Listen, in understanding the vision, you must not compare. Comparison is the worst enemy of understanding vision. If you start comparing yourself to your friend, if you start comparing yourself to your to your siblings, if you start comparing yourself to your peers, I tell you, you will lose sight of the vision. Because you will not be tempted to ask the Lord, Lord, why is it that uh, 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 this person has gone far? This person was even teaching in school. But you don't understand that there is a vision. There is a vision. That person is running by goal. You are, run, you are supposed to run by vision. Write the vision. Make it play. Now the Bible says that he that waits may run there with. You know what that place means? It means that, listen, when you have made the vision a mission and you have provision, you will not have a, you, you will give birth to a generation from your vision. That means there will be people who will now be established based on what you have established. You have become a foundation to others. So, you see, when we come today and we talk of our fathers in the Lord, fathers like Rayan Bonken, who is late now, fathers like Billy Graham, fathers like Benny Hill, these men, they understood the vision. So, based on that vision, most of us now are now, do you understand? We are now reading. We read stories about them. We read realities about them. So, we are running based on that vision. So, that means somebody has will come in understanding his own vision, the person have to understand yours. We don't understand that every fulfilled vision huh, gives access to a new generation. And this time, the generation will not go through what the other went through. Do you understand? So you have to work on yourself. Not just the goal. Make the vision plain. Plain. In case you don't know, God did not make any man as far as this world is concerned. There is no man God made visionless. Every man that is a vision. And you see, there's something you have to understand. Listen up. God will not reveal your mission to you until you now read the vision and you make it plain. That's when God will begin to give you the instructions you need. And you know, it is revelation that gives birth to instruction. Instruction gives birth to actions, decisions that gives birth to manifestations. So you have to understand these things. So there are things you can never understand. One of the prayers you should be praying as you are stepping into 2020 is, Oh God, what is your vision for my life? What is your vision? What is your vision for my life? What's your vision for my destiny? Do you understand? What is your vision? Show me what you want me to do. Not, Lord, next year I want to do this. I want to do that. And God said, okay, have your way. But as I most times, all those I want to, I want to. It does not happen. Show me, Lord, what is the vision? What have you said? If you read your Bible, you understand that even Jesus walked by vision. The first thing he said, ever said as Jesus matured was that the Bible says he went into the what? Temple and he read of the books of Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has what? And what did you see there? That's a vision. What has he anointed me to do? To preach the gospel. To heal the broken hearted. Oh, to say the comes. You see vision? That's vision. The ever first thing Jesus said in a public meeting was to make plain the vision. So, 
we have to die now. We have to die to our way. We have to stop saying, Lord, I want to, I want to, I want to. When you say, Lord, and you say, I want to, God say, I'm already. Say, Lord, what are you saying? What is the vision? God may, see, listen to me. God may say, the vision is for you to uh, reach out to teenagers, reach out to children, reach out to the um, the aged ones, the elderly ones who don't have strength to move anymore. You can have, the, your, God can say your vision is to preach around Bariga. Now if you don't understand that vision, even your goals cannot be met. I've told you that the fulfillment of your goals in life comes hand to hand as you fulfill the vision that the Lord has given to you. I love your presence. I love your precept. What is your friends? What are you singing now? Yeah. I love your presence. I love your presence. What is your threat? What are you saying? So you need to go to God and you say, Lord, what is the vision? Some of you, maybe God gave you a vision to convert prostitutes. What's the vision? Lord, give me admission. Give me admission. And God said, the vision I have for you is that when you get into school, you will convert 500 people for me. But now, if you get the admission now, will you be able to convert 500? Hey, but let God give me admission first. Now, when I get there, maybe God can arrest me. It doesn't work that way. I've told you God does not waste resources. So you have to go home. Lord, provide for my family. We want to park away from this place. Listen, it will not work. I'm telling you. See, blessings comes as you understand the vision. So when I began to understand the vision of HPM, each step I got to understand, God made a particular impact. Each step. step. I told you how I did not want to live in Bariga. I said, no, of all places, Bariga, never. I, I was brought up in Bariga for many years. So I never want to live in Bariga. And, when, and that day I was going home. And the Lord said, son, how do you conquer a territory if you don't stay within the territory? That's Bishop. And now me that I don't like Bariga. I, like, I love Bariga now. Because I'm seeing the vision. I'm seeing the vision. God told me. He said that the members of HPM are not members of other churches. He said they are on the streets. Vision. Vision. So you have to understand your vision for your goals to be fulfilled in life. If not, you will keep struggling. That's the that's just the mystery. You keep struggling. You will continue to struggle. Lord, please now nah, just just give me just give me hundred thousand. Listen, at every point in my life where God gave me a huge amount of money, it was in line with the vision that was playing. In line with the vision that was playing. The first time I ever received 95,000 in my account at once, it was in line with the vision. I needed to buy, okay, buy drum set and then what did I buy it then? I forgot it. When we, the next big money that came into my hand was also in line with the vision. 
the first time that my account was written up to 300,000 was also in line with the vision and I began to execute it one by one as the money came. So that's the way God does his job. That's the way God works. So you are saying, Lord, <laughs> some of you are already writing, writing that next year we need like one million naira, and God is looking at you. My friend, the first thing you need is not one million. The first thing you need is understanding of your vision. If you understand the vision, one million is more. It will come. I want us to pray for a while. So I'll give you the next 10 minutes to be praying some prayers as I'm raising up. <laughs> 